Welcome to turn 7 of the playthrough of Orb and Crown between El Condoro and Nicholas Wolf. Let's get straight into the replay. I suspect that uh, things are going to heat up a little bit soon as Angnord will uh, start to counter-attack against the Draka forces that are holed up in Water's Bend. It's not going to be an easy fight for them, but eventually they should prevail because eventually they will also have Ang Ford coming from the west. Alright, so Buyaron has mobilized, as has Jamarok. The, uh, the gnomes of Jamarok will, uh, will mobilize immediately, that Buyaron does, because they are implacable, um, eternal enemies. And so if one gets into the act, the other will follow. Uh, which is what it says there. So the Tribal League has also learned the secrets of the Ortenza mines. There's a story of the the way that the mines uh, operate, and until they get that information out of the uh, the, the wise um, magicians and so forth from Thrangren, where magic is a, uh, a just a, a part of life, they can't run the mines, and now they can. Okay, let's have a look at this. We have an offer from the Hill Giants of Steading to join Draka. Now they are going to be quite useful, but we'll have a look at the map to see where they are first. So this is Draka's area and Steading is just here. Of course, this is the Hill, Hill Giant Steading uh, from the famous Dungeons and Dragons module uh, against the Giants, just replaced into this particular world. All right, so I am going to say yes to that. Let's have a look at the notes first. It just basically says that over 10 turns, it'll cost 300 gold pieces. Now that's the same price as what a, a giant unit is normally priced at, but of course it takes 10 turns. So it's sort of like a you know, lay-by type thing where you pay as you go rather than paying up front. So let's say yes, and the giants will mobilize. Okay, so we now have a giant unit with us. They're very, very handy. They get two attacks and they hit really hard. Okay, now I left Draka down here, which might be a good idea. First off, I'm going to... Oh, that's a little bit dangerous, actually. I'm not going to uh, attack with the the big wings. I'm going to see how far can these guys fight. Not far enough. Okay, I'm going to move across the strategic bombers because I really need to see what's behind this unit here. This unit here is just screening the, um, I'm sure, some elite units that are in behind here. Um, so I could send send something down to scout, but that will uh, probably affect the, in, the entrenchment of these units. So I might just have to wait, or I can take a risk and just fire, uh, well I can't fire behind, well there you go, that's interesting to know. Uh, I'll just hit them with Draka doing six points of damage and as I said there's a, an elite unit and also a veteran unit in behind the screening forces. I'll move Draka down a bit because he needs to be able to hit further than, than what he did just then. Reinforce the Viking Raiders, reinforce the veterans that are up in Goodrich. These guys will have trouble getting out unless you force march them, in which case they can move a little bit further and then they'll be able to join Draka's forces quicker. Okay, back up here against these guys. It looks like uh, Nick has not reinforced them. So finally, the, um, the keep of Xander falls. And next will be Holtus, the, um, the town or the port city. Uh, right on the edge of the Poseidon Ocean. Ooh, okay, they're holding out very nicely and it will take another turn. But that's all right, no problem. I need to start moving these forces back because if we have a look down here, we'll see that Angford is on 77% mobilization. So as soon as they're able to send troops through this gap here between the Big Wolf Forest and uh, your Mirren Vale and the mountains there, then they will become a problem for me. So I want to get down here and start screening this area and fortifying it around River Mist in anticipation of that. Okay, going across to the Vikings. They are sitting on 87% now, so they will mobilize either the next turn or the turn after. Uh, 247 gold pieces. I could wait and purchase a veteran unit next turn, but um, I'm going to actually invest in some research. 
last turn I invested in invasion and weapons so now I'm going to invest in I think armor let's increase their armor as I said this is going to be a personal taste thing for everybody for me I like weapons and armor leadership uh, magic and march in formation but uh, that doesn't mean that they have to be the ones that you go for ranged weapons is also useful because it, it automatically adds to the um, the attack values of, of units uh, it's, it assumes that the archers have been added into those units the same with land warfare sea warfare and sky warfare they all add 10% morale uh, to those types of units all right going across here to Andania the navy of Andania continues to move into position and soon it will be raiding out to sea their strength a bit. All right, we now have a navy in place ready to go. 209 gold pieces. I think it's time to put some money into research. So for 209, uh, this time with these guys, I'm going to try this espionage and try and increase their ability to uh, research faster than uh, the other countries. Put 200 into that. For Potentia, I will research uh, industry again. I'll put a double chit in there and get their production up or their industry up as quickly as possible. Nothing to move. Uh, I was going to put the Empress into the town of Gavalia and that way she'll be able to raise her army uh, a bit quicker. Now the other thing that Potentia needs to do is look out for these Praetorium here. There are four of them across the country and until a veteran unit is placed in them they won't produce as much as they could. So a garrison is not as useful as a veteran unit but there's a veteran unit here so I'll just force them into that Praetorium to bring this mercurial uh, city and its fort under control so that it will produce as it should. Uh, this Praetorium here I don't have anything handy to send in there but what I might do is take this veteran put it into the Praetorium um, down here near Versailles and that will increase its production. Once they mobilize, it doesn't happen until they mobilize, and then I will force them up to Potentia. And the same with this one here, I will force them down to the final Praetorium in the south here around this fractious area as we've talked about in prior turns. Continuing the attack into the ancient lands, I'll move the air units down towards the south and move the light cavalry to have a look. There's nothing there, so there should be no problem whatsoever in taking that next turn. The rest of the units, the rest of the army, I want to start forcing them to, well, when I can, to move up to the north because I anticipate that at some stage, let's have a look at what they're in, the uh, mobilization of Chinua and Sinai is at the moment hovering over the top. I can see 34% and 10%. So they're not really moving that much at the moment. So there's no real threat there. But if they do, they can threaten this flank. So I, I would pre prefer to actually go up there and either respond to their attack or attack them, declare war on them to take out that threat potential threat. 163 gold pieces is not enough to do much so I'll just quickly zoom out have a look around and I left out quite behind here which was a bad thing to do. Now I think what I should really do is attack these uh, gnomes with what I've got there I could possibly actually take them out. Um, doesn't look like it but I'll attack with the giants and with the goblins. I'm actually not going to attack even though there's there's better um, let's have a look at this better odds against that leader there which is Grush Kelling the 
gnome leader. I'm going to try and soften them up a little bit with another attack and soften them up again with the giants so that now I can okay I can hit them with the big wings but I'm going to send in the elite first all right so that means that because of I was in that position at that particular time the gnomes um, are in a bit of trouble here they look like they might succumb much quicker than what you what I'm sure Nick would like. But I can't actually get in there yet. I imagine I'll be able to get in there next turn. And that's it for the turn. Let's see if there are any decisions. Right, Mittelheim, like I said, is just about on the cusp of war. Transorum Imperium has moved towards us 27%. That's a big move. That's good. and our gold piece accumulation continues to grow. All right, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.